What's up, what's up, what's up? If you're brand new to this channel, do me a huge favor and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified so whenever I hop on here from time to time, you'll get the notification too. All right, so I figured, um, why not you guys hang out with me while I have to learn some music for church tomorrow. So um, we're gonna go over this song. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Hold on one second, guys. Huh? I'm on a live. What's going on? What's going on? Big bro. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. This, this is crap for years. I appreciate that. Yo, so we're, we're going over this song. Try to learn this song, so... So let's do this. The song is called How Great. All right, so let's go. Over here. So I wanted to add this look in there. So this is that lick that I'm trying to add in here because we're in the key of E, right? So. Almost like a, a like a pentatonic move. Alright, so let's see, see if we can add it in there. All right, cool. So I think that that lick will work. Just try, you know, again, you wanna, for me, I'm always trying to find cool, creative ways to spice up the song without doing too much. And I feel like I'm still grabbing that line. I feel like I'm still grabbing that line, so. It's always important whenever you're working on experimenting and expanding that you don't want to get so far away from the initial like idea that it doesn't it becomes like something completely different and nobody knows exactly what you're doing so you want to make sure that you're grabbing that idea it's really important to make sure you grab that uh, that idea um walter from highland california that's what's up okay i see you you're rocking <laughs> out learning a lot cool that's what's up that's what's up just watching and learning a lot uh to learn how to learn a song. Yeah, so the thing at the end of the day, you wanna figure out what key you're in, but as you're listening to the key of the song, like the principle that I'm always trying to do is like when I, I wanna make sure I'm grabbing the song, but as I like kind of infuse a little bit of myself, I wanna make sure that I'm still getting the idea out. I don't wanna make sure that, what I don't wanna do is I wanna play something that's so completely foreign to what the song is that it sounds like something completely different. That's one thing that I, we as guitarists or as musicians have to really be mindful of that we're doing is not making it sound like it's something completely foreign to what we're initially trying to do. We wanna make sure that we're grabbing the song. It's really important 
to learn the song, if you're going to put yourself in the song and have a little bit of influence, make sure that the idea is not so to the left that we don't even know what, what the initial song is because that's that's not going to be cool at all. So I wanted to hop on here, answer a couple questions. I was just working through that song. I was figured out, like, listen, we could talk about it a little bit because, I mean, I played the song a few times before, but it's been a minute since I've, like, touched on that song, so I had to remember what the actual lick was to get into it. But then I remember I used to add this lick in there, and I thought this lick was kind of cool. So it's really important to make sure you you make sure that you're you're grabbing the song. Okay, Gary, I see you rocking out. That's cool. Um just learned that song sweet <laughs> shout out to carrie uh just showing love on the page because i check every now and then and again uh, oh man that's what's up that's what's up what up from south africa that's what's up what is your setup for recording so my setup for recording it depends like so if i'm out in my home station i normally use the boss me 80 um if i'm going out to a studio nine times out of ten i will take the helix if i don't take the helix then i'll take that whole pedal board situation in that case back there right but i try to travel in um lighter and more efficiently you know what i mean it, it's not really about how much gear that you have it's about the tools that you have that can be the most effective with right so that's why the helix works for me it allows me to do what i needed to do so i'm really important it's really important to just kind of make sure i maintain that when i'm going out to do di different sessions so that's a great great question um, and then the guitars it, it also matters depending on what the session is i'll normally ask Yo, what kind of session is it that, that we're doing? Am I do I need to bring an acoustic? Sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. Oh, this is a pop situation. So for pop situation, I try to bring guitars that will give that pop vibe. I'm not gonna bring something that's a little bit more R&B induced. You know what I mean? So that's something that I want to make sure that I'm mindful of. Hey, Carrie, how do you run the melody and sometimes chase the bass player? So at the end of the day, the bass player is really going to kind of give me the foundation to let me know. What I don't want to do is find myself doubling up if i don't need to double up if i can play like broken chords if you will like maybe three three note chords or even triads triads are really important that's why i say it works if you have like a some go-to triads that you can do whenever you're playing sometimes it's cool to double up with the bass player to really follow exactly what he's doing but you don't have to do that every single time that's, it calls balance that's the more you start to do it the more you'll start to understand how that balance works what is your favorite um favorite guitar for r b Right now, my favorite guitar for anything that I play is my Raven that I was just playing. I was just setting up for, here for practice, uh, nine sus movements from your video you sent. Oh, thanks, man. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. What's up from Childersburg, man? Do you have any um, contemporary gigs? I have a gig this Friday, uh, but it's in Atlanta. It's at a place called Brownstone, so I have a gig this Friday um, that I'm sure I'll probably get the music for, if not tonight, tomorrow. I might even get it Friday. It just depends. You just got to be flexible, you know? That's how a lot of times these gigs, these gigs, local gigs happen. They'd be like, yo, are you available? And they just sing your music and be like, let it learn it. I know you'll get it. And then we may run it at sound check. So you just got to be prepared for anything. That's really why it's important for if you guys have struggling with the number system, you don't really know the number system that well. It's really important to really get that underneath your hands because it's going to be a lifesaver for those guys that get like last minute calls to try to figure out all the songs that you got to play, what key is in, how do you follow the pattern. The number system is a game changer. So I highly suggest that you guys put a lot of focus in your energy. If you haven't really got into that, really check it out. I got plenty of courses on that, like on Carrie's Camp. You should definitely check it out. Go to K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com and check it out. I mean, I've got plenty of stuff that's really going to get you tight on the number system so that way you're able to have last minute calls. That's really what it's about. The number system will help you out when it comes to you playing at church, when it comes to you playing R&B, it comes to you playing Neil Soul, gospel, pop, singer, songwriter, whatever the case is, the number system is going to help you. It's like you're fail safe in order to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing. If you're not one of these people that know how to read, but you know how to like kind of do broken chord charts, the number system will work perfectly for you. You know what I mean? So the, the idea about guitar is to give yourself the most tools to be effective, but also to be comfortable while you're playing. You don't want to be like so rigid and stiff. It's going to make everything just that much more it's unfun you know what i mean you're not gonna have fun doing it and what's gonna happen eventually you're gonna wind up putting it down so it's really important to make sure that you're like you're maintaining that you're staying focused learning as much as you possibly can in order to make the, the guitar as, as fun as possible so like i said i'm here to answer some questions so if you guys got some questions let's knock it out i'm trying to knock out as many questions as possible before i have to get ready to sign out because i still got some work to do so if you guys got questions or anything concerning guitar, concerning the industry, concerning like rehearsal schedules or practice or how tour life is or whatever the case may be, 
um, I will answer to the best of my ability. And if I don't know it, I'll tell you that I don't know it. So, so what you got? Come on, fire up. Let me see what you guys got. <laughs> rhythm tips. All right, rhythm tips are what you want to do is you want to make it feel good. You want to, at the end of the day, when you're playing rhythm, your job is to make the song feel good. You don't have to play full chords. You can play like ghost note kind of stuff. It's not, it's about the feel. So if you can really work on your feel, then your rhythm game is about to be incredible. In recent interview, you said uh, you run lines, which is not a solo. What does that mean? I'm playing riffs, so I'm not soloing. Like, like I was just doing it in this song, right? Like, how great, uh, whatever the song is, I did that. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. That's not a solo. I'm running a line. That's a line. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. That's a riff. That riff fills up that space. It makes the song feel a whole, lot, a whole lot better. It's not like I'm soloing. This is the difference, right? <clears throat> because if I was soloing, I'd just be going for broke. You know what I mean? So let's just play that song, right? This is me, this is soloing. That's soloing. A riff. That's running a line. That's what I'm talking about. That's the difference. You're not soloing, you're running a line. Okay, what would be a good, uh, what would you suggest for a good practice metronome? So on your phone, you can download, uh, there are a lot of different metronomes that you can download. If you have a smartphone, or if you're in like, you have a different kind of DOS, just put the metronome on. It doesn't matter what the, the tempo is. I always say start out slower and then build up to the desired speed. Some good questions. Sorry for all the questions, but what exactly are, are phrases? Phrases are conversations. So like when you speak, you're not speaking in broken sentences. You're not like the cat big, you're, it's together. The big cat ran across the street. That's a phrase. That's a whole phrase. Like if you're talking, if you're communicating, that's what a phrase is. It's like a whole idea when you're playing out for your, your riff. You're not doing dun, 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 dun. It's dun, 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 dun. That is a phrase. Dun, 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 dun. It's a phrase. That's what it is whenever you're playing a phrase. Hope that makes sense. So lines are deliberate riffs and soloing is more of a freestyle going for broke. Uh, it, it can be determined that way. Sometimes solos are scripted, depending on who you're playing for or what level that you're playing at. It's not necessarily going for broke because everything is, is supposed to be um, done with discipline. So you're not going for broke. Um, you may have a moment where you can have a little bit more free freestyle. But yeah, riffs are deliberate lines that you need to do. So that way you're not taking away from the music. You're enhancing what you're doing. Any good uh, brand tips? For a guitarist, producer trying to get a, get a following, be consistent in your in your posts. Show people what you can do. That's how you get the consistent consistency when it comes to your branding. You want to like show people what you do. You can't say you're producing and people go on your page and just see a whole bunch of food. That it doesn't work. So you're saying one thing, but you're not showing exactly what you do. So showcase what you do. Be consistent with your posts. The more posts that you can do, that doesn't mean you have to post five times a day. But that means if you post once a day um, at the same time every day for a whole week, for a whole month, for a whole year, people are gonna know like, yo, I wanna go follow Too Smooth because I know he's gonna post a guitar video. He's gonna do this, he's gonna do that, da, 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 da. That's how you establish your brand. Please explain tone. Tone is the actual pitch of what you hear. So your tone could be either real muddy, which is sound like really this, or it could be too high pitches, like ah, really annoying, or you can find that very sweet spot where it's really warm, it's really touch, it really sounds like it's it's supposed to fit in the song. You know what I mean? So think about tone as if like it's a shirt that's too tight. If it's too high pitch, it's too tight. If it's too big, it's too sloppy, but if it fits just right, that's when your tone is exactly right. All right, if you're playing with a keyboard player or organ player uh, and they're playing all the chords, what should you play? It depends, because your job might be just to play all the rhythm like the lines. You may be able to grab the lines. That's what it is. So it depends on what it is. You can't, it just depends on the genre of music. So let's say if you're playing at church, 
You may have to double up sometimes with the chords, but you may also grab the lines. But if you're playing in a band, your job may to be just play rhythm or just play lines or maybe double up with some of the warmer chords, change the voicings. It's all different. I'm a new guitarist here. Where can I start? So if you're brand new to guitar and you want to know where to start, I highly suggest you're a prime candidate for Carrie's Camp. I would go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. What's the best amp for R&B? There is no best amp for R&B. Um, you have to find whatever number one fits inside of your budget, what sounds good and what you can afford. And or if you're on tour, like what you can get with backline. It just all depends. How do you build up and be able to see chords? So if you're having, Harrison, if you're having an issue and you want to know how to do more chords, I would say you're a prime candidate for Carrie's Camp. Go and check out our video chord library so you can get those chords underneath your hands. K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And I'm telling you, we're going to get you right. We're going to make sure you're solid and have all the chords underneath your hands. You'll be straight. All right, I'm going to take a few more questions, man. So if y'all if y'all got your stuff, man, go ahead and fire away before I think you're ready to go. I want to make sure I'm getting you guys the cream de la creme. Harrison, did you see what Mike just said? You need to learn the number system. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. I saw a video of you playing at a church, bro. You can definitely, can you demonstrate what you're playing there? No, I'm, I'm not going to demonstrate what I was playing there because that was in the moment. You got to understand when you're playing at church, you have to be in the moment. It's not one of these things that's scripted. That's why it's really important to work on your ear training. That's why you should definitely become a camper. The vibe was, it was a vibe. The, the MDs in my ear, like calling out the changes, like, oh, the changes are two, six. All right, we're going to go to flat seven. You guys, why it's really important as a guitarist, you really got to know the number system. You really got to know how to use your ear, how to play various things, how to go in and out, knowing how to create riffs, how to have lead lines, how to have long lines, how to create like different kind of like swells and all that kind of stuff. That's why it's important for you to become a camper. That way you can find out the proper tools and I can show you specifically how to do that on a consistent basis. So stuff that happens in the moment, you can't always like, oh, but I can, we can go and analyze it, but you're never going to get it unless you're in a proper setting where you can really understand how to develop your ear. It says, how do I develop my ear? Your prime can you need to go check out our ear training. We're going to show you how to develop your ear. You got to have specific training that shows you like how you can hear what you're hearing and how you can voice it on the guitar. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. Some gear info. Thanks, bro. What kind of gear info are you talking about? You're talking about what I was using? I was using the Helix, and I was playing my um, Tom Anderson uh, Raven Classic. It's custom. I'm a camper. Just want to say thanks. Man, you're more than welcome. Do you like guitars like SGs? Are double cutaways? No, I don't. I'm a huge fan of the Offset, which is why I play the Raven Classic. I'm a huge fan of the Offset. I do not care for SGs. They don't really necessarily fit the vibe that I play. Um, I've played SGs before. It just doesn't necessarily like grab me. And when I hear the tone, is we don't really connect in what we're doing. You know what I mean? Abs definitely joining Carrie's Camp, man. I look forward to having you join Carrie's Camp. I'm telling you, it's going to blow your socks off. You're going to see how much value of information that we have is really going to help. If you've seen any of the testimonial videos that we posted here on YouTube, you're going to understand how it works, how Carrie's Camp is definitely going to help you grow in your craft and really become the solid guitarist that you want to become. I'm telling you, if you check it out, it's really going to, it's a place where it's a community. We talk about community. We literally have guitarists all over the world that are part of this. That's why I tell people all the time when you're on here, stay what city you're from because it's a great networking opportunity. We're going to help bounce ideas off of you. Nobody, it's a safe space. It's not a place where we sit there and we, we, Nobody judges. It's a safe place. And that's one thing you need to have as a brand new musician, as a brand new guitarist is trying to get comfortable with their craft is having a safe space to feel that you can learn. You can make mistakes. You can share your, your ideas. You can ask questions and not feel like, oh, man, I'm getting made fun of. That's why I love my community with Carrie's Camp. Really enjoying the content so far. Any advice on playing and singing at the same time? Hashtag camper. Um, Honestly, I can't play and sing at the same time, so I can't give you any advice on that. What I would tell you to do is get with singer-songwriters that, that do that, and maybe they have a special gift or a special technique that they do. I cannot sing and play at the same time. Either I'm going to sing or I'm going to play. It's just not, both of those are not going to happen. 
I'm a witness, gained a lot of knowledge from the first year of being in Carrie's camp. That's what's up, Phil. Let the people know, man. Do you think it's useful to start learning songs by, by ear only? Yes, Harrison, is definitely because you're, what you're doing is you're, you're causing yourself to really work that muscle. Your ears, like I was saying in the video that I did with uh, Dream Morgan, your ears are your eyes. And if you can't, you have, don't have really strong ears, you're gonna be blind trying to navigate through a song. So it's really good to start learning songs by ear. Now what you gotta do is as you're learning by ear, now you wanna start working on the technique. Okay, what key is the song in? Got it. Okay, now that I understand what the key of the song is, what's the pattern? Let me chart out what the pattern is, and that's why I say using the number system. Okay, the first chord is a two. Okay, the next chord is a sounds like it's a four, then it sounds like it's a six. All right, cool, so this song is in the key of C sharp, it's two, four, six. So that way you're starting to use all of your tools, and as you get it underneath your hands, you have it, what I suggest you do is modulate it, like play it in different keys using the same number system, and then start to develop riffs, so that way you can start to feel how to make it feel good, how to ha put your own influence into the song. There's a lot of things that you can do outside of just learning the song by ear. What's up from Chino Hills? Happy Lifetime Camper, that's what's up. Uh, do you have a method uh, for notating or remembering where to go when, when you're transposing your solo. Uh, so the method that I have is you run it until you can't run it right, or run it until you can't get it wrong. So if I'm having to play a solo, like one that is already scripted, that's one that's already been kind of like mapped out for me, you run it until you can't get it wrong. Now, if I'm just vibing, I have a couple go-tos. Like I know how to play by ear. I know various like approaches that I want to use whenever I'm playing. And that's what I'll do whenever I'm playing. I'm loving the energy in here, man. Thanks so much for providing uh, this space for all of us to learn and grow, man. That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. Listen, I love you guys so much. I really have to get ready to go. Please, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, do me a huge favor. Subscribe to this channel. Click the bell to be notified because I'm going to come in here often to just do what I'm doing right now. Answer questions, sometimes play, sometimes talk through, whatever the case may be. If you're really you know, interested in trying to learn about Carrie's Camp and you're just like, what is this? Man, just check it out. It's free for the first seven days. Go check it out. We just dropped the link in the comments, right? So it's www.kerrysk.com. Check it out. I want to see you guys in there. I want to hear your feedback. I love you guys. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.